hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel thank you all to those who have subscribed and i please encourage those who have not to please subscribe to my youtube channel so in today's video we are going to continue our topic the generation of this time and remember i had said in the last video that i would have people come on board to share their ideas their experiences on this topic today we had two beautiful ladies come on board and to help us discuss giving an insight to our topic of today which is how do we catch them young and fresh these two amazing ladies came on board and actually opened even my eyes to a lot of things that i did not even know like i said we're all a learning process and it's a progress in our daily life you know when we get to when we get to know new things that we never never knew our first guest is a wife a mother an educationist with over seven years experience working in the primary school and running a home tutorial classes from year two above she prepares these children for both independent and grammar schools. She also has a qualification in mental health for children. She's been working with children for over 15 years with a vast knowledge of parenting. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Fumi Adeyemi. Our next guest on this edition today, she's an experienced English language professor an intercultural communication specialist and consultant, motivational coach and a trainer. She has proven success working with individuals, schools and companies. She's a learner-centered and innovative professional. Her interests range from photography, fashion communication strategies and breaking cultural barriers through language. She's also interested in entrepreneurship education and writing she's a very organized and creative professional with proven critical thinking skills with a desire to set to succeed please welcome miss chinyiri eweliki i would encourage that we sit back and listen to learn and see how this too brought us to a world a different world of parenting and mothering oh so today as you guys have known, we I had said that we were going to be talking about the generation of um of this time, the generation of this time, and the area of your concentration is how do we catch them young and fresh? I had spoken about who are these generations in the first segment, which was just myself, and um I had um I had um described them as um, children from the ages of six to 18 or to, you know, as long as their parents can have them and call them children. However, <coughs> the way they have um, developed and the way they've matured and the way they've grown into a lot of things, we don't even see them as children anymore. So we call them youth. So that title children has actually been stolen and ripped away from them. And now they're all presumed to be youth, youth, youth. You know, I, I want to start by, by asking, you know, these children are out there, and right from birth, we tend to feel we have control over them. Like, this is my child. This is what I want to do. This is how I want my child to look. This is how I'm going to groom my child. Even though they say, do this, I'm like, no, this is it. And now they're growing, and they're, how, do, how are we able to manage these children right from that youthful age? I know even kids from three, from four, they begin to start troubles, but I'm saying six, because that age actually opens them to the world of school, the world of understanding where the remote control is, the world of knowing where to go grab something from the, you know, from, from, um, from the panty room to steal things, to pick things, to hide things. So that's why I'm starting from, you know, like the ages of six. So from, my question now is, from that age, how are we able to manage the students? So I'm going to start with Chinieri. For me, um, I'm one of, I think I started learning um, from the get-go, um, especially when I got here. Now, that's not to say that I didn't make mistakes along the way. Um, when I realized, I think mine came like an epiphany, first of all, when I realized that, 
okay, listen, um, I may be making, I may be causing more harm than good if I'm trying to use my Nigerian or African um, form of education here, you know, where my child is concerned, um, rather than trying to find the balance, you know. And I think uh, it was at that age, actually, at six years, when I began to come to that realization, you know, of, you know, typical African Nigerian mom, come on, shut up your mouth, come on, do this, come on, do that, to changing and switching that, you know, ideology to, okay, so what do you want to tell mama? I'm ready to listen to you. Okay, talk, I'll listen, and I'll keep quiet, you know. So we, it's like trying to actually dialogue with each other, you know, at this point. And I recall one incident that happened where, again, I just realized that, listen, there's so much to learn from these kids. I actually have nothing to teach them. I, I, I put myself at that position. Like, not like, of course, it's exaggerated when I say I have nothing to teach them. But when it comes to the world they are living in, I'm the one supposed to be learning from them, not the other way around. You know, so that day we went to the doctors and um, he had his uh, pediatric, because he's asthmatic. So he had his um, appointments with the pediatrician. And, you know, while we were there, the pediatrician was asking him questions. I, would, I noticed and watched everything she was doing. I was out of that conversation. And she just kept on, and he was asking, you know, he had their cute little voice, and he was speaking in French. And then the only time she came to me was, uh, so you speak English with him? Yes. And that was it. And then she went back to him. And they were having so much fun. And I looked at that interaction, you know, uh, where he was talking to her about his friends at school, the things they did at school. And I noticed she said, every time she asked him, how do you do this? How did you do that? How did you? So that was the moment I realized I'm like, oh, she's a doctor, but she's also learning from him. And that was the day I now realized and I said, ah, okay, um, they must be involved, you know, in the conversation. The conversation should be about them. The conversation should be about what they see, what they perceive, what they notice. The conversation should be about an exchange and not instructions, you know, in our regular African mama, you know, type of um, uh, a way, you know. Thank you so much. And really, I must emphasize on that. Yes, because um. We have actually taken my son to the doctor and I realized they were, you know, talking to him, asking him all the questions. And I almost got upset because I'm the mom, right? I'm in charge because, you know, and so I, I you know, stepped back to understand that, listen, that's true. Is the one in pain. He understands what is going through. Is the, So why am I getting upset when they're not asking me that I'm his mother, you know? So I think you're, you're, you're really right. And with the way the system is here, they tend to, calm us down to understand that these children have a life that we can also learn from. So yes, I take I, I, I take that point, very, very important point. So I'm going to ask you the same question too, Fumi. What, what, like how do we catch these children as young and fresh as they have? All right, thank you, Tosi. Um, God bless you. Um, first, I'm going to come from, I'm a typical African mother. <laughs> Even though I'm here in the UK, but I'm a typical African mother. Um, but I'll just say maybe the difference is probably um, the slight, and I'll say slight difference is probably um, the fact that, you know, I communicate with the children. You know, I leave room for that, you know, that channel. There's this channel of communication. But that doesn't change and cannot change the fact that, you know, I'm still the parent here. You know, I, 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 first I'm a parent and, you know, I'm an educationist as well, you know, and I know that there has to be a line, a clear line drawn, 
you know so as much as i want my children to you know have that flexibility of being able to you know have access to me and talk to me and share anything with me they still know where the line is drawn okay i'll give you a typical example um in my i mean some people might see it as oh there's nothing really wrong with it and all um i don't take certain kind of jokes for my children and they know from right from when they were young you know so you cannot look at me and I say ah mommy ah you know you're stupid Joe. you know mm -mm -mm -mm. it's not possible you understand i remember recently actually recently you know um my little son is 10 we we're talking and then he said ah um um sometimes i'm a mate and i said ah, wait i'm not your friend don't use the word meet you understand because i feel like they need to understand you know that they have we have rules you understand now what this country or you know this country does is it tries to take that you know authority away from parents okay and then it makes the children to feel oh do you know what the government has more power more say more authority over them than the parents and I would always go back to the word of God. It says, train up your child in the way of the Lord so that it would never depart from it and all, you know. So right from when they have been, when they were young, you know, we've tried to instill that, look, God factor. Because I feel like, you know, no matter how strict or firm you are as a parent, you know, you cannot take that God factor out of it, you know. You cannot train your child except the Holy Spirit helps you, you know. So I do not take that for granted at all, you know. So sometimes, you know, when the children do certain things, and this is how my parents as well, my mom especially, brought us up. I remember how when, you know, I mean, my dad, we, we could chat with my dad, we could chat with my mom. We had that communication line as well, even though, you know, obviously you can't really compare to, how it is now but i could reasonably have a decent conversation with my parents you know but then i know that when we upset my mom or we've done something really wrong my mom the way my mom deals with it is after she has flogged you during the day in the middle of the night she will now wake you up with the word of god and she will now pray with you and she will tell you that that child that does not want his mother to sleep cannot sleep too. That's what she will tell you. Okay. So she will now tell us, okay, Psalm 19. That's how I knew most of the Psalms in the Bible because when you offend, you will just, <laughs> you will just, yeah, he's the Psalm because she'll tell you that ah, we've dealt with the physical part of it. Now mm. we need to deal with it. It has to be spiritual for you to be misbehaving like this. It, it just has to be spiritual. You understand? So she instilled that in us. And that is the kind of um, discipline, okay, and culture that I have tried to instill in my children as well. I don't do flogging. You know, I don't really do, I don't do flogging, but I believe in communication, in talking, in dialogue. Do you understand, you know? So most times when they do anything wrong, I will sit them down, okay, with the word of God. And I will tell them, look, it is not mommy that is saying it all, but you read the Bible. What does the Bible say? I'm not saying that the government is not saying this or no. I'm not saying this one is not that all. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But that, you know what, eh? which one do you choose to follow? Read it by yourself. And they read it themselves. At the end of the day, they're looking at me. Mm. Once I do that, I have ended the conversation. You understand? So I don't have to go and start quoting this, quoting that, and all. I'm a teacher, my professional, and I know how, even in school, we see some children that their parents do not have no grip whatsoever on them. A child who is eight years old, I remember calling one of my parents and I said, Oh, I noticed that your child has not been, you know, completing her work online and all. And she said to me, oh, no, 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 no. Mr. Deemi, you give so much work online and that, you know, what? I'm not ready to get into any kind of quarrel or fight with my child because she needs to do her work. And I'm thinking, really? Eight years old. He's okay. You know, and I left it. But in my head, I'm thinking... That is how much she's lost it as a parent. 
again, we cannot completely blame parents as well because when you look at it, you know, when the, you know, I think the fear that is there for parents is the fact that oh, you don't want them to, you don't want the government to take your child off you and all that. But at the same time, I will still go back to how have you started with that child? It's the foundation. Who is in charge in your house, in your household? How have you started? I, I'll, I'll, I'll um, give a typical example of um, a family friend of ours. Um, I think the boy misbehaved in school and the teacher um, reported the boy to the parents. On getting home, I guess they must have obviously corrected the child in the African way. So when the child got back to school the next day, the teacher that actually reported this child, I mean, for me, you have reported, you know, a child to the parent because you expect them to do something about it, you know. And then she goes back and calls the child and asks, oh, so what did your daddy do exactly, you know, to you and all? And uh, I guess the boy told the teacher. When the parents came to pick the child after school, they said, oh, no, sorry, you cannot. There was social service waiting and there was a police waiting as well, you know. Now, they've got two children, I, I know, three children in that school. And they said, oh, they couldn't release all three to them. But they had to take them because, you know, he um, disciplined the child. But, you know, um, they took those children for about three weeks. When they returned the children to the parents, you know what the police and the social workers said? They mm. said, whatever it is that you're doing with your children, Eh? Carry on. Mm. Stop. That's because they had, you know, I guess what they do is they'll probably interview the children, quiz them, and ask them questions and all. And they said that so many times they asked, they asked the children, Oh, do you know what? Um, why is it that your father um flogs you? Why is it? and they said the boy said that even the Bible says that you know, with the rod of correction. You know, you correct a child with the rod of correction and all that, you know. And the child also said that, but if I haven't done anything wrong, I know that my father will not flog me. Mm. And my parents don't flog us because they hate us. You understand? They flog us only when we have done something wrong. Now, I am not saying that, oh, it is okay to flog and all, if you know what I mean. You know, but... Give me one moment, please. Just one moment. I just want to get... Yeah, sorry, continue for me. Okay, so I am not saying, oh, you know, it's okay to flog and all that, but what I'm trying to say here is, even when you correct your child, let them understand why you're correcting why? them. Okay, let them know why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. Do you because you never can tell where they will be asked. Yeah. You understand, you know, I also feel like, you know, these social service people don't just come and pick your children and they, I know, you know. So I usually, for people that are close to me, I say to them, you know what, do not be afraid to correct your child because you are afraid that you're going to because at the end of the day if you do not correct that child you stand in fact your situation is even worse off mm -hmm. because you will lose that child completely you will lose that child completely you know because it will get and i say to people whatever it is that you have not instilled in a child before six seven forget it Forget it because they have begun to, at that age, they started forming their own ideas and, you know, they now want to be themselves. They want to even please their friends, not even you anymore. By the time they become a teenager, you know, to be honest, it's only the grace of God. It is not what you say that matters to them anymore. You know, I remember taking my son, we went, you know, he's 17 now, we went out together. At that time, I think it was maybe 15 or so, and he wanted to buy a pair of trainers, you know. So I saw the trainers and I liked it. I was like, oh, this trainers is nice. I know. You know, he looked at it. He was like, oh, yeah, mommy, it's nice, you know. And then I noticed that, you know, he sat down as he was trying, trying it on. I saw him, you know, chatting on his phone. And then I kept saying, ah, Michael, come on, make up your mind on what you want. And I said, yeah, uh, mommy, I'm coming. Just give me a few minutes. Do you know what he was saying? He sent the picture of the trainers to his friend to ask if, oh, he was okay, you know. So the typical Nigerian in me, eh, the first thing that came to my mind is, ah, uh -uh, 
Hey, you know, I took you out to come by trainers, and then you're asking for permission or, or what? Do you understand? You know, but then I again I sat down and I remembered how I was as a teenager mm. as well, you know. And so when we got back home, eventually it took that same trainers because his friend said, Oh, it was okay, with her. and then it's okay. When we go home, and I sat him, I said, uh, uh, Michael, you know, um, I need you to be able to build confidence in yourself, you know, that because you know. Why did you have to ask your friend? You know, and I said, no, mommy, it's not like I don't have confidence in myself. And it's not as if, you know, I don't trust what you have picked and all that. But, you know, I don't want to go out there and then my friends are laughing at me and all of that. Do you understand? So they also have these, they have their friends, do you understand, out there that, you know, also feels whatever it is that you're saying. So it is important that, you know, before they have though before they get to that level where oh they need those confirmation do your own before they are six put everything that you need to put all those the right things just put them in them and make sure that you know it has a strong ground and a strong foundation you understand before they now get out of you know because they're not going to be with you yeah. all the time you know so yeah god help us in jesus name uh, thank aside from what the system is they also have the friends that influence them a lot. One thing, my one of my kids, I know a friend, a friend came to knock on the door and said, Hey, can you tell Gabriel to come out and play? And his older brother said, No, he's busy. And the boy said, Busy doing what? And he came out the next day. He went to meet this friend. And the friend said, So how come you're busy in the house? Well, can't you tell your parents? That's, that's what I tell my parents. You know, and everything is okay. So the next day he came and said, mommy, can I go to the park? And I said, no, you went yesterday. And instead of using all the words, the boys advised him to use on me. Like, so mommy, why don't I, why should I even be busy? Why must I do this? Why must I do that? So my question to you, when situations like that arise, one, they're not being influenced just by where they are, but with who they are. And these are friends, I must tell you, no matter how much they spend with you, they spend lots more with them because they're in school with them. They probably charge community activities in the park. They're with them. And somehow, no matter how much you break bounds, they still find a way to communicate. So my question, when things like this arise, like it's this influence going on this child, how are we able to manage it? I'm going to go with you, Chinyere, first. Okay. So, yeah, thank you so much uh, for that, Tosin. Um, um, one of the things, again, I try to be very, very careful about is um, trying to, again, like I said, you know, trying to um, automatically, I mean, this is their world, not ours. So I try not to automatically uproot um, exactly what the tenets in Nigeria are or in Africa here. What I live by is adaptability. And one of the things I've learned, this is me in a nutshell. When you tell me when you get to Rome, behave like the Romans, I will tell you when you get to Rome, take from Rome what is good, throw the trash out. That's my motto. So while that is said, I also want us to understand that most of the, I believe that most of the um, 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 forms of training back home were one, for lack of knowledge, two, for basically, you know, information and, you know, tenets that were passed on from generation to generation. This was how my mother did it. This is how, you know, that kind of a thing. But I've learned that, you know, just as I decided to find my own path, they would also want to uh, find their own path. But then again, there are tenets that exist that automatically help us to raise these wonderful youths. And those tenets are what? What makes you responsible? It's something I tell my child. You cannot have privileges without responsibility. With privileges come responsibility. So you have to get that. And I remember when we started this lesson, 
And he was like, okay, so what are the risks? Well, I said, one of these responsibilities, not one, many of these responsibilities will start with yourself. Tidy yourself up, tidy your room up, tidy the house. When the kitchen is a mess, the plates, you do that job. When mama is in the kitchen cooking, you walk in there. If mama says, okay, do this, you do it. If papa comes in and papa needs this done, do it, except if it's your bedtime and it's time for you to go to bed. As you grow, you will understand that those things are a part of life. They are not punishment and they are not maltreatment. Get this down because eventually you're going to leave this nest. You're going to go away. And then you are not going to be where you are and expect me to come and pick up your clothes to do the laundry. I ain't going to do that. You live with your filth if that's what you want. Okay? And, you know, again, it's an ongoing process. Even the way they behave. Okay? I want to tell the story again. I where my son has his friend and his friend has this thing about, you know, white boy, you know, and he doesn't know, he, at the time, he never knew how to say hi. He doesn't know how to say good morning or good afternoon or anything. And this thing happened twice. And, you know, in, right in my presence, I go to pick up my child from school and, you know, he just keeps talking to my son as if to say he didn't see me. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm one of those people that, you know, when it comes, they're like, no, if it's an African child, you know, I would, I'll probably overlook it, but I said, I, was, I want my child to be an influence, not the other way around. You know, I don't know if you, I keep, there's something I keep on saying, you influence, they don't influence you. So I remember that day, I looked at it, and, I, and I, the first day it happened, the second day it happened, the third day his mom was there, and the mom and I are friendly. So that day, you know, she came, she was walking and he came to meet my son. He came to me, hey, all the way. And I'm like, and I looked at him in French and I said, to say pas de bonjour, that is, don't you know how to say um, good day? And he looked at me like, ah, bonjour. I'm like, man, ça c'est mal poli. That's, it's very impolite. You don't do that. When you see people, you say hi. Even if it's somebody that is, just say hi. You don't, you, doesn't, you don't have to know the person, but you come here every day. You walk by my side with my son, with your mom. You don't say a word of, you know, hello. The mom heard. And from that day, I didn't, I didn't know that the, the, it was a lesson also for her. From that day, that boy began to say bonjour. And not just you guys say phone. There was a day they even I called my son on the phone. They picked the phone and said they wanted to talk to me. I said, eh? I've now become super mom. Do you get that kind of a thing? So I believe that while we want to do what we do, we take what is good, use it. Finding the right balance. Exactly. It's about the balance. And again, I keep on, like I said, I can, I tell my my child. If I didn't know or if I don't know that where I came from is amazing, I will not be telling you what I'm telling you. You should influence. Yes. They should not because they need to learn from us. We are not supposed to learn from them. They came and disrupted our status quo. We need to teach them our status quo and let them know that this is how things work. OK, I could go on and on and on. So uh, you see, again, like I said, that, you know, finding that place. And I, will not I think training is training anywhere in the world. Do you understand? And it's it's I understand where Tosi is coming from when she says that, you know, because obviously in Nigeria, you have more liberty, so to speak. You know, you're you you have more. Um, I don't want to say use the word power, but control. You understand, you know, there's no fear of oh, social service or fear of, oh, my child is, good. you know what I mean? But then they also have, you know, the they also have, so for example, children that parents have, children that come out from family where um, there's too much control, okay, or they, most times their parents don't even know them. 
you understand and i have always said i would like my children to know i would like to know my children you understand as much as you know there are certain things that you know i don't agree with and i will not agree with you know i would also want you to be comfortable enough to come to tell me oh mom you know i know you don't really agree with this but what do you think you know mm -hmm. i want us to have that kind of relationship mm -hmm. you know so just to buttress what you have said it's finding the right balance you know, finding the right balance and helping the children know that whatever it is that you're doing, you're also teaching them resilience and you're teaching them, you know, what's to come in life. At the end of the day, all of this that was saying is about training them, you know, teaching them what's to come in life. Because the reality of it is, you know, they're going to go out there to the world where you're not going to be, you know. I say to mine or to the children, I have lots of children that, you know, even when I shout at you and I talk to you or I discipline you and all, it is because I love you. Because even the Bible says that, look, God only disciplines the children that he loves. loves. You understand? He only disciplines the children that he loves. So he cannot even take that factor out of it. You understand, you know? So as much as, you know, you want you know, that relationship with your children, you still need to be able to find the right balance. Now, there's there's so much influence out there. They have the influence of their, of their friends, you know, both in school and, you know, at home and, you know, wherever, you know. But I will still go back to what have you done, the foundation, the foundation. Whatever it is that you have put in a child stays in a child. Now, I'm not saying that the child will not at some point derail, okay? But the child would always remember. Because I was once a child, and I remember even as a teenager, you know, there are certain things that, you know, I did that the way, obviously, a no-no for my family. Do you understand, you know? But I always knew where to draw that line. Because I always remember where I'm coming from. My dad, every time you're leaving home, my dad would say, remember the daughter of who you are. Mm -hmm. I say to my children, once they're stepping out every morning, I take them to school. Once we're going out, I say, remember the children of who you are. One, you're a child of God. Two, remember the family that you're coming from. In our family, we don't do this. We don't do this. We don't do this. We don't do that. You understand, you know, it doesn't matter how you want to see it, but in our family, we don't, you know, let that child know that this is the standard in your home. Okay. I never, ever, you know, um, agree to, um, a child. I, I never, ever, um, support, you know, when I see, maybe I get to a household and I see a teenager, you know, in the household and, the teenager is just sat down there. It is the mother that is washing plates and um, cooking. Honestly, I find it so ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I just find it ridiculous. But you know what? If you have not introduced it to that child as a young child, it's going to be difficult for you to now say when the child is now 13, 14, you now say go and wash plates. She's going to look at you as in, for me to wear now. You know, it's a bit like, you know, even carrying school bag. I don't do carrying school bag. I don't do carrying school bag. And let me tell you why. My, I may be wrong, but the way I look at it is, that's the only responsibility you have. So carry it. Carry it. It's your bag. It's not, you know, <laughs> in school, when parents come, some parents come to pick up their children. As soon as they pick the, the child just dumps the bag on it. I'm like, eh, eh, for possible. <laughs> you understand, you know? Uh, it's not it's not just i find it so because i feel like that is where it starts from it's from there you understand mm -hmm. you know that's your responsibility that's the only responsibility you have at that time as a child do you understand so carry it it's your responsibility you understand you are the one that has gone to school you are the student there oh i go to work i don't give you my file to carry for me carry yours you understand you know and you don't get used to it and it's just the same thing as taking care of yourself as a child making your bed give you know age appropriate um chores to a child i always say to my young friends i say to them look it's okay if your child does not wash the plates well yeah, it's of course it's part of the learning process it's part of the learning process do you understand it's okay if they don't make their beds well the point is they're making that they're doing it they're doing it you understand you know 
my i remember when my children were still you know a lot younger i used to say to them my daughter was the one in charge of the kitchen as in tidying up the kitchen and all and this is at a young age of you know 80 years old and all she would i'll would tell her i do her ah i don't have nightmares oh. if you don't clean the kitchen i'm going to have terrible dreams and do you know what I don't oh. yes so you know for a very long time she believed it in fact the boys as well you know so <laughs> you know so i used to you know you know you have to just do it you have to do it now i remember that after some time and i realized that oh do you know what this is not just a female chore a female yeah, responsibility exactly. you know? and i also want my boys you know to know that you know it is not written anywhere that it is only the girl that has to go and wash the plates and clean the mm. kitchen do you understand you know so because then what we did was oh the girl will clean the kitchen and then the boys will hoover and you know and i said no no mm -hmm. no so one day i just you know woke up to it as well and i said you know what we're going to you know be switch switching and all that you know so this week you will do this one the next week the other boy will do this one and you know i'm still doing that because at the end of the day i want them to be able to be responsible for themselves you exactly. know and then i always say to myself i don't want my daughter or my son to get married and then their wife or their husband will be cursing me because i have not done what i should have done do you understand you know as a mother you know because at the end of the day you know i say to my my my, my boys i say look when you're able to support your wife at home honestly they'll be peace in your house and what's the support that she needs you know sometimes oh you help her wash the dishes it does not yeah. change the fact that you are the man of the house mm. really you that, that's actually the truth I, I i think that's one of the mentalities that i think one has to actually you know work towards on learning yeah the fact that a man is that is helping you in the house less it doesn't man. remove from him he's a man yeah. and again you know they, they, they a lot of men do not have not understood that actually their wives appreciate that thing it may seem like they are not but they do appreciate it they do they do also seeing Right. you know i was just going to say role model, role model. model. exactly they need, they need to be able to see exactly so doing it you understand you know, they need you know there's, there are certain things that you know sometimes i want to wear but then i'm like mm, my daughter you, you know, know I don't, thank I don't you I, yes, I was going to go just because way. just because you know i don't want my daughter dressing in that way, that way. you understand oh, do you know up until today i cannot wear you know um um mini not big i don't have a problem with people that wear it so honestly i don't you know but i cannot wait why because i wasn't brought up that way mm -hmm. i was i'm not comfortable in it i don't have a problem when i see oh ah beautiful but you know what i wasn't brought up that way you understand now i'm on my own and I, I mean i'm with my husband i know i'm a grown adult if i decide that i want to be naked and be walking up and down and you know the only person that will probably have a problem is my husband and i can decide that you know i want to fight him for that <laughs> and say, yes. do you understand you know yeah but i am not even comfortable dressing in that way i don't want my child my daughter to dress in that way okay and and the way i deal with it is i call her i always there's something i always say to all of them both boy and girl you know your body is the temple of god almighty Hello. you understand you know the way you i say see the way you dress okay you are you are dressed the way you dress okay and you'd only attract the people that are dressed like you to mm. yourself or so the people who need what they need from well, you exactly you exactly i said to them i say look you see all the boys that used to sag 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 and be walking up i say in america it's prisoners that sag you understand you are not a prisoner do you understand you're not a criminal you're not a prisoner you understand and then i who, who, you know who are the kind of people you expose your children to who do mm. they see who do they see how do they how do you look you understand the people around when i tell them i say look i don't sag your and your father does not sag okay i don't wear clothes that you know make me half naked you understand you know so in the first place when you're asking yourself where is it from and i tell them if you just like that everybody knows that it's definitely not your mother or your father <laughs> because they know that we don't dress in that way yeah you understand you know and again because but what i also see is or what i what i feel again is we can't even put all the blame on these children mm -hmm. you know? 
I feel like a lot of parents, especially our age now, a lot of parents want their children to look the way they cannot They look. wanted. Exactly. As young people. As young people. Okay. But then they will not get to a stage where they won't even want it. They won't want their children because there's always danger. You understand? There's always danger. Well, let me, let me butt in here uh, very quickly because while I want to talk about, while it's very easy to pinpoint um, what kids or well, what the children went, want to wear because, you know, they want to be in the in crowd or they just feel like they want to wear mini skirts. Let's still not, do not forget that influence carries a big, very, very oh, yes. big factor. Mm -hmm. I was in secondary school and truthfully, I recall when I was in secondary school, uh, I, when hot pants was in vogue, I wanted to wear hot pants. Mm -hmm. I even wore it. Not because I wanted to, I wore it. When they started doing uh, bike shots, I remember when bike shots, bike shots everybody's wearing today, I wore. But today, I can't wear bike shots. Exactly. Okay. So let's not remove the fact that influence plays a very, very, very strong role oh, yeah. in, in, in this, you know, peer pressure, influence, and just wanting to be in the in crowd. It does. You know, it, would, would it negate the fact that it makes them bad people? No. 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 Will it remove the fact that it makes, the, will it make it uh, look like they are bad people? No, they no. are not. It's just that there is a certain form of influence that exists outside of the family that is there. And this influence could also even go, you know, down to extreme levels where um, you have a, a child. There are even a lot of true stories that I know that because of the kind of controlling lifestyle the parents have, these kids, when they leave home, oh, they do they something dress else. the way they, yeah. their mommy and daddy wants them to yeah. dress. But when they are out of that house, if you see them, you will not recognize them at all. Again, let's know who our kids are. And I also believe that most times uh, experience is a wonderful teacher because sometimes you, ex you would try to stop, you know, something, but it, you know, it could also be nice when you allow that thing to happen just so that the lesson that you want to pass or the lesson that is to be learned is learned. I don't know if you understand what I mean. So, you know, again, influence plays a very strong role, you know, uh, we in certain in, in some of these things where you know will the parents eventually begin to complain about it i don't know i'm not well, i'm not of that school when it comes to you know dressing i'm always a bit careful because it has a lot to do with personality and influence yeah. than what mommy and daddy oh yes it does what, but what, you know yeah, it does. But again, okay, I still feel like, because I was once a teenager as well, and I was in uni as well, do you understand, you know? I still feel like, you know, as a parent, you still need to say what you need to say, the right things. Mm. Let them know what is right from what is wrong. Do you understand, you know? And then allow the child to make their choice. Do you understand, you know? But th because we are, uh, we are a guide to our yeah. children. We're yeah. not supposed to live their lives for them. At the end for of them. the day, they're going to live their lives mm -hmm. whatever way they want to live their lives, okay? But at the same time, because what I know is, mine is I still, you know, explored, which is part of growing. It's part of growing up. You understand, you know, I would even want my children to explore. But you know what? I always like them to know where to draw the line. Mm. And how do they know where to draw the line? That is where the... Um, that is where the role of the parent comes in. You understand, you know, having to talk to them from time to time, it does not change the fact that, you know, they will still do what they want to do. But you see, no matter if it, it's, I mean, I feel like it is worse not saying anything. Mm. You understand, you know, just allowing them flow, you know, with, you know, with whatever it is, wherever it is, the wind blows them just go anywhere do you understand i think it is worse than you know saying something you can say it it can be hard when i was growing up i remember that i never really appreciated my mom as much as i appreciate her now yes. i am telling you eh, if my mom was not the way she was i probably would not turn out the way i am today 
My dad, when we're growing up, was a very diplomatic person. When we offend or we do anything, my dad would sit us down, you know, and talk to us and tell us, my, my dad, I can't remember my dad ever flogging any of us. My dad, but even as parents, you know, we also shouldn't allow that fear of, oh, I don't want to lose my child. Do you understand? To hold us back from mm, saying the from right thing. Exactly. exactly. We also shouldn't be so strict, you know, to the extent that we lose those children completely. Mm. You understand, you know, let there be a line, draw that line. You know, let there be, let them, let the child know, oh, do you know what? This is where I need to draw the line. This is what I need to do. This is what I shouldn't do. Because whether we like it or not, okay, they would eventually know. They would eventually, they know what is right from what is wrong. Listen, if you don't know how to, you know, talk to your kids, call me, I'll help. Not because I have special powers for it, but because at a certain age, it's time they begin to, you know, their bodies will change. And I always believe it's better to be safe than sorry. And if you don't do it, someone else will do it. And the way someone else is going to do it is going to be a nut job. It's going to be a catastrophe. So for me, I started when he was, I think, nine or 10. And we then began to talk using, you know, the terms that are appropriate for his age about your body, sex. In fact, one of the things I started talking to my son first about was abuse, sexual abuse, because I've been, I'm a victim. So I told, I remember when I said, and I said, eh, nobody should come and tell you they want to touch you. Or they, I, that was where we first started. Okay. We first started with that. Nobody, if you go to the swimming pool and somebody touches you on your bum bum, let me know. Even if it is like this, I want to know. Do you get? So that was how we started. And then we got into, you know, sex education. And then we started talking about the body, how you, you, your body changes and different things, you know, but, you know, using, again, an age-appropriate language. And then by the time he got to um, middle school, he had started, you know, they had started, you know, and I noticed something. The day my son was, was um, supposed to be learning about it, I noticed he was very uncomfortable. And I was like, but we've talked about this before. I'm like, oh, mama, but I just want to see it by myself. I'm like, okay, fine. And then I left him. And then after, I think two days later, I now called him and I said, so did you understand what you watched? He said, yeah, it's just what the science of it. I'm like, okay, do you want us to discuss the layman terms of it? And he said, yes. And that day, it, for me, I made it look like it was a, a normal discussion. We were making pancakes and made sure that the, we were as, com as comfortable as we could be. Pancakes, juice, whatever, it was on the table. And we're, you know, we're talking. And I told him and I said, what to expect? This is what happens. This is what happens. You know, he said, time will come when you will even start liking girls. And I would like to know who they are, you know, because... Again, back home, taboo over topics that are natural. These are things that happen, you know. The fact that he's going to like a girl is a normal thing. It may not consummate into anything eventually, but first love will happen, you know. Wet dreams will happen. Um, uh, what's it called? The, 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 the mustache, everything is going to happen. Even my son is always, you know, he's always looking at his mustache. And I'm always like, okay, I have my microscope that I'm using to scan the mustache. And I'll be like, okay, I can see one, two. Because I just believe that they just have to be comfortable about it. And we must, this is a conversation that must be had. Okay. Now, be, again, my 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 cousin will say, ah, Kukuma, thank God, say na girl in like, you know, based on the situation, the world we live in today, you know. I'd rather get to know that girl than carry out the approach of what do you know you're doing? Because another girl is gonna come. And another girl is gonna come. 
But when they are equipped with the kind of information that they need, Otis is a very good person who is another good example who, you know, has been able to walk her children through it. And she has was very, very clear. She said, you can have girlfriends, but you cannot have inter, um, inter uh, you know, you cannot have a sexual relationship until you get to a certain age. And before you get to that age, we're going to be still be talking about the consequences and things and the things you have to know and what, you know, that kind of a thing. And find out from her because it's a conversation that must be had. Okay. I'm going to start talking to my daughter, to my children as well about sex education and all, you know. I started the way, because I was not comfortable just hitting it like that. So I started with the word of God. I started from, oh, you know, your body is the temple of God Almighty. You know, you are beautiful, you are handsome, you are this one, you are that one, you know, and all. And, uh, you know, when you start growing, this is these are some of the changes <clears throat> that you see and all of that. So I had had that, you know, conversation with them. You know, so I have got a son with 17. I've got another one who is um, a daughter who is um, 15. And I've got a bigger boy who is 25. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I started, when I remember when I first, you know, I just introduced it to them, all that talk and all. Now, the first time my son heard about it, as in properly, pop, was in school. When they had, you know, a video and all, but then they had, informed the parents that we're going to show them this talk to them about this and all that i was like oh okay that's good you know but then you already heard it from me first you know exactly you heard it from me first you understand at the time he heard it from me i didn't go i wasn't very detailed but it wasn't new to him because i had told him certain things and all that you know so when my son got back home he called me, I was in the kitchen. He said, mom, I want to have a conversation with you, but it has to be personal, private and personal. I said, eh, okay. Then it was, um, I was in year six. It was, so it was about 10 years old. So he said, oh, then I said, okay. So we sat down together in the room. And then I said, oh, in school, we spoke about this one. We spoke about that one, da, 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 and all that. He told me everything I said. Eh. I said, so what do you think about it? And I said, oh, well, yeah, mom, you've told me some of these things before and all that. That's so, you know, I mean, they showed that it to us. I said, so how did you feel? I was like, well, nah, it wasn't, you know, anything and all. I said okay all right I said so now this is the science part of it so if, I mean I was more confident yeah to, to move on. Write on that you know so I just wrote on that and then um you know for them they even told them about condoms they told them about you know yeah yeah ocean and all of that you know and that it was from there and I said okay now they've told you about the science part then let me now tell you about the spiritual part of it okay? so you know I now joined my spiritual part of it too, and you know we mixed everything together <laughs> again balance it's all you about know, balance <laughs> we shall mix everything together just to get you know so that you know again you don't want them to get it twisted yeah do you understand you know i mean we're in a world where you know oh it's okay i remember when it's I everywhere it. actually <laughs> yes that's what i'm saying you everywhere. know we're in a world where you know what you i mean a boy and a girl will just will be flirting and kissing themselves you know you as an adult you are walking past they don't even look at you unlike you know growing up you know you turn up and you be hiding in corners you, you understand you, you, you turn up doing that mm -hmm. oh, and these are things that you know your children see they see they hear you understand you know and sometimes you know they question even if they don't say yeah. to you they question they quiz themselves you understand you know so you don't want them you you don't want them to now have the wrong ideology of these things. So, and so it's important for you as a parent to just, you know, come in and say, okay, you know what, you're not strange, you're not a weirdo, you know, to feel this way, to have certain feelings and things like that it happens, you know, but then when it happens, this is how, you know, you need to um, deal with it. This, these are the things that, you know, you need to say, and this, this is how you need to handle all those things. My son, just like as well, I like my children's friends to come to the house. I like them come to the house first, you know. I like to be comfortable with them first. I like to be comfortable with their parents. I like to know their parents. I like to know their family. Because I always say to my children, look, like terms, you know, you need to attract. attract, you understand? Because even for your own sanity, it helps you. Do you understand? It helps you. It makes life a lot easier for you. My husband usually will say to my children, you know, whenever you have a friend, a friend, think about it what do we have in common what do we share in common you must have common values you must there must be something connecting you yeah 
Do you understand? You cannot just say A is your friend, B is your <clears> friend. <throat> eh, eh, no, you, something must connect both all of you. Do you understand? I know. And so, are we able to retrieve them back? You know, how are we able to bring them back and actually put them in place, understanding that, listen, I know you could have, you, you might have been wrong. In fact, some of them, because I just had a parent, you know, recently whereby a child had to go to jail, you know, and this is a very good child, but somehow something, and the child is coming back and there are so many things now she's knowing, oh my God, this was going on. I didn't know this was going on. And she kept, she, you know, she came to me and said, how do I do it? Like, I don't even know how. First, to gain her confidence back. Two, to make her herself confident to get back into the society without being labeled. So my question is how? When, when they've even gone wrong or they've, they've fallen once or twice, how do you catch them back and be able to bring them back into sanity? Making our kids know and understand who they are. You are the better. You are the best of the best. Your skin color, where you come from, who you are, is what makes you you. My son speaks three languages. But if, when time he talks, even when he talks to some of our friends in Shagamu, they're like, this boy is Nigerian. I say, I'm they a defined person where they speak for now. It's not because I didn't do it. He's the one actually that began to like, Mama, I want to find all those Nigerian videos. My son understands pidgin. I don't speak pidgin at home, but he understands pidgin. He speaks it. He hears when I, you know, interact with Pigeon sometimes. But he understands it because he gets to watch Nigerian, um, you know, uh, 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 comedy skits and stuff like that on, online. So, again, um, I think it was you, Fumi, who talked about affirmations, telling them, you know, every day about who they are and stuff like that. And, you know, it's important that they get to know and understand these affirmations in depthly. Who you are, you are a king. You are this, you are that. Give them the tools they need to be able to stand tall because it's important. Let them gravitate to you, towards you, not the other way around. Because in that moment where you do that, you've won. So I, for me, I need your view on this. Like I said, children that have fallen, and like I said, they will keep falling because we're all a work in process anyway. And that's why we're here as parents to even be able to, you know, put them back online, teach them. But when a child falls, now to build our confidence in that child, that's one. To build for the to help build the child's confidence back, that's another one. Then for the child to have that confidence, to be able to get out. And be who he wants. What are your like? What are your advice? Okay. Um. Thank you, Tosin. I'll start with. I'll take it up from where she stopped, and um. I'll start with letting them know who they are. Mm -hmm. It's very key. You know. Um. I usually sing this song to my children every time, and they love it. Now they sing it. You know. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. You know. I sing it a lot to them. You know. And I mean, right from when the song came and, you know, they loved the song and it was intentional. It was intentional because, you know, I want them to know their identity, first identity in Christ. And, you know, I'm sorry, but I always like to go back to that, you know, Christ, God, 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 because that's for me, that's where the foundation is, you know. I always like them to know who they are in Christ. I always like them to know who they are. I say to my children, if, you, if you're not confident in yourself, if you're not proud of yourself, if you're not confident, you know, in your family, if you're not comfortable with your family, with your parents, you know, if you're not proud of your parents, you know, and all, do you know what? You're going to lose, you're going to miss it out there. I always say to them as well, nobody can love you as much, much. as your immediate, nobody, yeah. nobody. But first you must love yourself. If you mm. don't love yourself, no one can love you. I mm. always tell them. I said to them, I said, look, I had this conversation with my colleague at work today and we're talking about all oh, being fat and being slim. And I said something, I said, do you know the funny thing is, being fat and being slim does not even matter to me. That because you can actually be slim and not have 
confidence at in all. In yourself, exactly. In yourself. That's so at the end of the day, it still boils down to how do you see yourself? Do you understand? What kind of person do you see yourself? How do you carry yourself? You know, there will people will carry you the way you carry yourself. They will call you the name you call you yourself. Call yourself. That's it. It's what you call yourself that they will call you. If I say to everybody my name, if I wake up today and I decide that, oh, my name is now Chiri. And I keep saying this, my name is Chiri, my name is Chiri, my name is Chiri. Everybody will get used to it. They might not like it. But you know what? Because that is what you I want to have called call. yourself, yeah. They are going to keep calling me that. So if I, I tell my children, I say, whenever you look in the mirror, say those words to yourself. Call yourself what you want to be, who you want to be, how you want to be identified. Call yourself that, okay? Now, for a child who has, I mean, lost, quote and unquote, you know, who's missed it and, you know, you're trying to bring that child. I feel I cannot overemphasize the place of love and communication. Yeah, exactly. I cannot overemphasize it, yeah. that place of love and communication. Because when a child knows that, look, no matter what, my mom loves me, my dad loves me, loves my me. friends love me, they love me, they love me. Do you know what? At the end of the day, you would, over time, it might not just mm. happen just like that, but over time, the child begins to see it and begins to know that and accept that. I have a child in my class who says, oh, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't love my mom. I don't love my dad. I can't love them. And you know, they, I know they don't love me. Whoa. You know, I like to talk. Yeah. He's got, I mean, he's seen some, um, um, he's seen, um, psychologists and mental health and all of that. And all. he's got background issues, you know, but you know, he says, Oh, but Mrs. Adeyemi, you know, I can talk to you because you show me a lot of love. You talk mm -hmm. to me. At the end of the day, it's about love. It still boils down to love. You know, I tell people that look, you can be the bearer of the child. Does not necessarily mm -hmm. mean you love that child. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if it is the person that shows love to that child, that the person the child sees as a mother mm. you understand not because you know anybody can be a mother anybody can be a father and that's the truth mm. anybody can be you understand you know but how do you how do you show love how do you prophesy love to your child what is your love language you must have a love language you must have a way of communicating you must have, i tell my children off a lot you know when they do things you know i tell them off but at the same time i praise them a lot mm. I praise them a lot, you know. I had to start, even my husband, you know, I had to start, you know, teaching him that as well. Because, you know, I mean, back home, from where, we, where we're coming from is a function of, uh, it is only when you do something um, bad that you hear your parents' voice. You understand? Every time, let the children recognize the fact that, you know, you praise them, you appreciate them. Let it not be that it is only when you want to correct them that you, they hear your voice. And for me, it's a conscious thing as well that I do. There are times they do some things and honestly, I really just want to tell them off. But, you know, I'm like, for me, no, let it slide. You know, just just leave it. Just let it slide, let it slide. Let it. I speak to myself a lot. And as parents, we need to always speak to ourselves. Yeah. Another thing I do again is, you know, I always wear their shoes. I remember to wear their shoes. I remember, I try to remember how I was, the things that I probably would have wanted better as a teenager, how I would have probably wanted my parents to have approached certain things, mm. you know. And so sometimes, you know, I use that to, you know, kind of assess where I'm coming from and all. I tell um, parents as well that, look, my understanding of, um, of, um, my understanding of excellence and perfection is, you know, you're not where you were yesterday. It could be a baby step, but you know what? You're making progress. Mm -hmm. For me, that's excellence. Do you understand? You know, you might not be where you really want to be, you know, but at least I can see that you're progressing. You're progressing. You're progressing. And I know that someday you will get there. So a lot of love, a lot of communication, a lot of honesty. We have to be honest with honesty, our children. exactly. We have to be honest with ourselves Helps. as well. You understand? It's important for us to be, because sometimes as parents, we don't, we're not honest with ourselves. Mm. You, know, you know, and then sometimes, you know, like Tosin said, you know, somewhere we want to just play or we feel like in, we feel a need to be perfect. No, 
Mm. We don't have to be perfect. Do you mm. understand it? The, and the reason we feel that way is because of how we've been brought up. Mm-hmm. We used to see, we've been used to seeing our parents in a certain way. Certain way. You understand, you know? And so we want to model that way. You, you understand? And then when we now make mistakes, we find it very difficult to come back to them to say, we've made a mistake because we feel like mm, it's a taboo. They cannot hear that I've made a mistake and all that. But let your children know that, you know, as I am as human as you are. I have been through the process. You understand? I've had crushes. I've, you know, I've been infiltrated towards people. I have, you know, fallen in and out of love as well before I even met your father and all that. But you know what? It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make some of the things that I've done right. You understand? Sometimes I share some of these things with my children. I tell them, do you know what? Ah, you know, I remember that, you know, I did this, I did that and all that. But that, you know what? Well, honestly, I wish I never did. Yeah. And I really don't, you know. That's, I, that, this is a very valid point. Being able to tell them about your mistakes as yes. well. Yes. Yes, you know, that look, I wish I never did. I wish, you know, oh, I um, I, I did things in a better way. I, I wish this, I, I, I wish that and all that, you know. Sometimes I say to my children, I say, look, you know, when I say to you, when I, you know, I, I mean, I am on their case when it comes to education, as in, you know, you just have to, you know, you know and all that. I hit them a whole lot, you know, when it comes to, you know, oh, I keep hitting and hitting and, and my children are like, mom, I don't know how we can survive and all that. But, you know, I didn't know when they have so, yeah, you know, so, um, so one of my nephews said to me, as in, ah, uh, they call me big mommy, big mommy, how do you think you can survive this? And I say, oh, those ones are in front of you, they survive the teach you can survive it. Don't worry, you'll be fine, you understand, you know. So, you know, let them let them know that you know you you make mistakes as well, or you've made mm. mistakes in the past, and you're still making mistakes, and yeah. that's the you make the wrong you you make the wrong choices sometimes you understand but you know what is the what what the terrible part of it is when you make those wrong choices or when you make those mistakes and you remain in it you understand and you refuse to rise you know because when you make mistakes you know the idea behind it is for you to go back sit down go back to the drawing box what have i done wrong what is it that you know i could have done better better and, you know and that's it. You know, when I speak to my daughter as well about, you know, um, I remember one time when I, when I had a conversation about um, relationship and all, I said, look, I mean, the way I look at it is, as a teenager, okay, um, by the time you have dated Mr. A, B, C, D, they've broken all your hearts. By the time you meet your husband, you don't have any heart to give him. Heart to give. And that's it. <laughs> you don't have the any heart. The man would not be walking to collect the hearts. <laughs> you know, because you know what? This one has shattered it. You have small left. That one has shattered it again. Yes, did you know? Nothing is a surprise anymore. Exactly. <laughs> not, do you understand? You know, and I only say to them, I say that you know, it is your pride. It is self pride. You understand? You know, it is self. I, I don't have a problem with you having, you know, um, a male friend or a female friend and all, but you know, nowhere to draw that line. line. I also don't want to have a problem with. Having to, I don't want to now get to a stage where you know I'll have to now be praying. Hey, I need my child to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Hey, you understand, you know. So I also want them to have, you know, oh, relate with the opposite sex. You learn from, you know, these things, but at the same time, know where to draw the line. Mm-hmm. Now going back to what Susan said about influence as well, you know. Of course, your children see, they go out there, they see, you know, they come back, my um, children come back home sometimes and they tell me, oh, you know, this person has a boyfriend, this person has a when, when they t- give me all these gist things, sometimes my, you know, the African part of it. then I would just be doing it. Just, hey, hey, and then in my head I'm pleading, hey, blood of Jesus, oh, blood of Jesus, <laughs> hey, blood of Jesus, see that and all that. But you know what, say, when they now finish telling me all those things and I'll sit down and I'll ask them, okay, do you know what? You tell me what you think about this mm. thing that you have told me, this thing that you have said. No, be, just be very, you know, honest with me. Honest, what you, yeah. I like to know their views about things. Even when we're watching movies as well, you know, I, we sometimes watch movies together. And then when we finish watching, I was like, oh, so what do you think about um what this person just did? Or they, they share their opinions with me. Do you understand, you know? Even when it comes to, they've taught me, you know, I, there's something I learned from my children, not to discriminate. Mm. They are good. This generation, they're amazing with it. 
Yes. Sometimes when we're talking and I'm like, oh, you know, you can't do this. You can't, you know, they're like, mommy, but you know, that's discrimination. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Oh, I know but that's fine. But then I still go, okay, no problem. I understand it's discrimination, but you know what? Eh? You know that you cannot be doing this one. You cannot be mixing with this one. You cannot be doing that. You, know? you Just like Chinyi said, be an influencer. Wow. Be, you be the yeah. one. Don't feel awkward. This is your family. This is your household. Do you understand? If the person is not comfortable with your values or what you're doing in your home, then it doesn't have to be your friend. It doesn't have to be your, um, your, your, it doesn't have to come to your house. But before you get to that place, you must have done certain things. Oh, you yeah. must have made the child exactly comfortable in himself and in the values of his home. You understand? I tell my children, I say to them, I said, look, I know that racism is real. Mm-hmm. I know it is real, but you know, I don't want you going around in your head thinking that, oh, if anything happens to you, it is because of I always say to the message, you know, if you're outstanding, yes. okay, you shine. You shine. That's it. Yes, that's what I You're do. outstanding. So, Just exactly. be outstanding. So, exactly. So make sure that, you know what, eh? whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that, you know, you're aiming for the best. You have to just be the best. Oh, that's so, it. Because when you are the best, you know what I'm saying? There is not, there will not Thank be. Thank God you are saying is because my son is here and this is exactly the discussion we had. Strive uh-huh. like for excellence. Because nobody can deny you what belongs to you. Oh, we strive for excellence. Don't set so. Yes. But exactly, exactly. Exactly. Never ever settle for less. Never settle for average. Don't be comfortable with, oh, do you know what? Oh, I've got 50% and that's fine. Uh, no. no. That okay. is not fine. 50% is not fine because that child that got 100%, oh. it, it has the same head. You, you, you understand, you know? Exactly. Has the same head and you can do it. And so it's important that even as, even as parents, you know, you begin, you say those positive things into them. Yeah. Confess it. Say to them every day. When they wake up in the morning, you tell them. When they go, come back, you say to them, do you know what? I tell my children, I say, do you know what? Eh? You are the head. Wherever it is that you go, whatever it is that you, where you are the head, you are going to be the best. You are this, you are that, you are that. You understand? It does not change the fact that you know what thing eh? they 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 don't. Fa- um, it doesn't change the fact that they will face they won't face um challenges trials. and things like trials and all of that. But somewhere they know that look, do you know what? I know that I am this. I have the backing of my parents. I have the backing of God. I have the backing of my siblings. Do you understand? You know, and all. It's very very important. So just to round it up. It is important for us, you know, to show them a lot of love. It's important for us to communicate with them. It's important that flow of communication is very, very key. You understand? It's because, again, they'll ask you questions like, why is my friend doing this and I can't do that? It's a tricky one. You know, I remember when my children are not on Instagram, um, um, on Facebook, you know, and all. And I know how my children then used to ask me, as mommy, why, but some of our friends are, you know, and then I now, I sat down there, I said, okay, tell me, what is it that, you know, you want to get from Facebook? Tell me, what do you think you are missing? What do you think, you know? And they couldn't say anything. And I said to them, I said, you know what, I, I don't mean, I like to show them, when I see something that they show on TV that, you know, is not the right and all that, I always come call them, you see, and all that, you know. Well, sometimes when they come, home and they say oh mommy do you know what happened today oh one of our friends was uh, on facebook and so something happened and then you know they were detained they were this they were like oh ho. if you were not on facebook will, will, will you have any business there those students that are not on facebook do they have any business with any um story they don't have any business with and all that you know you need to make them understand that look you're not missing anything there's nothing but the moment is it's, it's almost like a child who has never been used to watching tv if someone else comes and the person is talking about TV, the person does not miss anything because she does not even know the value. Exactly. Do you understand? But the moment the child knows the value of this thing, then, and you take it away, then they know that, mm, there's something we're missing. Yeah. Do you understand? Then they know, oh, I'm missing something. And do you understand? And all that. And I said to, I said to uh, my children again, I said, look, if you know that, and if you, if you decide you want to be on, any kind of social media, make sure that you are matured enough to deal with whatever it is you understand that you see because anything can pop up. Anything can pop up. Anything can happen there. Do you understand, you know? Mm. Cyberbullying is real. You understand, you know? So can you do, I don't want you to 
now begin to have mental um, issues because of something that could have been avoided or irrelevant irrelevant it's not it's not it's not it's not relevant the fact that the whole world is doing it does not mean you have to do it but you know this right. Except for some of these things, you don't just say, you don't hit it hard like that on them. It's mm -hmm. subtle. You yeah. understand? It's an yeah. everyday conversation. You know, you talk about it like, you know, sometimes when I talk to them about those things, I just talk about it like it's trivial. Do you understand? We could just be cooking in the kitchen and then I just chip it in. So it's not like I sit them down and start having a serious conversation with them about it and all. Because sometimes I feel like, hmm. When I start having a serious conversation, you know, about it, they, then they can sit down and start thinking, you know, okay, why is mommy so, you know, negative, negative, negative. <laughs> So, yeah, so I tell them, you know, I do this, I do, then be role, let us also be role models to our children. You know, that's important. And I can never, and I will not overemphasize the fact that time is important. Yes, to spend with your child. Time is important. I understand that, you know, we're busy mothers. I understand that, you know, we have to make ends meet. We have to support. But you see, that time that we spare for these children, that time that we invest in these children, nobody can take it away from us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody can take it away from them. It is an investment. You know, I tell my young friends, you know, those ones who, you know, they still have children who are under three. I say to them, if you are not working, you're not missing anything. You're not missing anything because you know what? This work, you will work and you'll be tired. But you know what, eh? This is the foundation you're building your child and you're building that child you're building that child so that you know later in life you can rest you understand so that later in life you can rest god will help all of us in jesus name amen, amen. Here it has to go. no worries thank you guys so much honestly we've spoken a lot and i have honestly learned learned uh, I've learned a lot. A I've lot. learned a lot too. <laughs> it's a learning process. We are all in this together. <laughs> yes, so. Yes, so. Guys, well, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Fumi, for your all presence. Right, thank you there for having so us. Thank you. You were giving so much. You are giving just throwing out some through <laughs> bombs. Yeah, thank you. Th thank you so much, Yemi. I learned so much as well. Thank you, Tosin, for inviting all me right. as well. You know, all right. God bless you. Take care. Bye. Hey, guys. I'm sure someone somewhere has learned a thing or two from, you know, what our guests have spoken about today. For me, I have learned a lot. You know, sometimes you feel you know it all. Sometimes you feel you have it under your care. But the truth, we don't. We're all still on a learning process. What have we learned from what our speakers had said today? First, be the influence not the other way around. Be that person that would influence your friend in a good way. Not your friend influencing you in a bad way. So let your children be the influence, not the other way around. Also, get to know your child and let your child know you. Very, very important. Another point I learned huh, is love and communication. Love and communication goes a long way in parenting. You need to learn to speak to your child and you need to learn to listen to your child. One other thing that I've also learned is wear the shoes your children are wearing. Very, very important to wear the shoes that your children are wearing. One other thing I learned is be honest with yourself. Like you have to be completely honest with yourself. When you're honest with yourself, then you find it so easy to speak to your child and let your child know the right things from the wrong things. Also, another point that I got from those speakers is being able to tell them your mistakes. So being able to tell your child your mistakes. In the past, you fell. In the past, you had this relationship that didn't work out. In the past, you did this, you did that. And these are the reasons why you don't want them to make such mistakes because the consequences, you know, could, could, be, could be very grievous. The consequences could be high. So you don't want them to make the same mistakes. But you have to let them know the mistakes that you made so that they can learn from your experiences as well. 
another thing i learned is they need to find friends with the same thing in common like things together like attitudes if if, if you have a friend if your child has a friend and you're, they don't have the same thing in common i ask you why are they being friends so one big point is your children should have friends with the same goals friends that have things in common that way you are convinced in you that you know wherever they go together whatever they do together they have the same goals they have the same attitude their children like respectable children and uh, you will be convinced in you that someone somewhere is not influencing your child the wrong or negative way also be a role model i learned that as well and i think i said that in my very first first um, video you have to be the role model that you want your child you know you want your child to be for example one of our speakers had mentioned dressing you know how you dress if you don't want your child to dress that way then you gotta be a role model if you don't want your child to speak that way then you gotta be a role model if you don't want your child to act that way then you gotta be a role model because because your children would actually do what they see not necessarily what they what 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 you tell them to do no they would 10 times do what they see you do rather than what you tell them to do so it's important that we be a role model another big point that i learned there was we should endeavor to spend time with our children like spend quality time with your children there is nothing as huge as the moment, the minutes, the hours, the quality time you spend knowing your child, listening to them, having them talking to you, playing games together, watching movies together. From there, you can learn a lot that you never knew was happening in your child's life or what your child had been saying or what your child had always wanted to tell you, but you were never there. These are times that are very important to spend with your child. Nothing is too much. Time spending with children, there is nothing too much. It's just important that you spend quality time with your children. Another thing I learned is it's important you know your child's views. You know, it's important. You can let them explore and ask them, so how was it? What did you think about it? It's very, very important that you know their views towards life. It could be a movie. It could be something they've seen. Also, you saw this girl at the age of um, 15. She's pregnant. So what do you think? Listen to their views. Interact with them, right? Get ideas from them. You know, it's 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 something I learned. And I'm, I, I have always tried to, you know, come down to their level to, to ask. So what do you think about this? Let them tell me. Because really, from what, what one of the speakers had said, it's their time. It's really their time. And except we're able to get a grip of them, they're just going to sleep away. They're going to sleep away. Also, I learned that, um, you know, don't be too strict till the point that you lose the children. And also, don't be too afraid to discipline your child so you don't lose them completely. Two things. Don't be too strict to lose the child. And don't be too, too scared to discipline your child so you don't lose them. So the last point that I want us all to take on today is finding the right balance for yourself and your child. I want to thank the two ladies that came on board to, you know, enlighten us more on this topic. I want to encourage, you know, you guys to please subscribe. I want to encourage you guys to also leave your comments, ask questions. Let's see who's coming on board. If we can ask them, you know, these questions and have them respond. Listen, we're all just trying to raise a godly generation. And I think, except we all do it together. Because where I come from, they say, it's just one woman that bears a child. But the entire village raises that child. And who are those villages? Friends? Families, neighbors, these are all the village that raises a child. 